Creepy old guy at the playground, let's not meet again. Hey there, been lurking on the sub for a while now, and I've seen many interesting stories pass. I figured I'd share my own let's not meet encounter, though compared to some of the others I'd seen it's quite same. Also, this is my first write-up and English is my third language, so there may be some syntax or like grammatical errors anyways. First, have to start with a bit of background information, since it's somewhat vital to this case. This took place about 20 years ago, when I was still very young, 7 to 8 years old. Growing up, my close relatives were scattered over two countries, so it wasn't unusual during birthdays to cross the border and visit the family. I didn't speak the language, but luckily the grown-ups could all speak mine. So it happened that me and my family crossed the border one day to visit my grandmother for her birthday. Her house was somewhat remote on the edge of town, quiet location, but ideal for an older woman who enjoyed her quiet. In walking proximity was a small playground, which we enjoyed visiting whenever we were there. It gave us at least something to do, and the entrance to grandmother's garden was always visible from where we were. It so happened that on this day, me and my little sister were the only ones on this playground, playing as kids do when they saw an older looking male with a cane come out of one of the little back house alleyways. He was dressed in a long trench coat with rain boots and a large cowboy hat on, something immediately felt off about it, though as a kid, I just couldn't place it. My sister and I had climbed onto one of the playground equipment at this time, elevating us from the ground by several feet, putting our feet at about his chest level. He walked up to a short distance, asked us something in a foreign language, and put his hand in his jacket pocket and offered us some mints from his hand. I told my sister in my native language that she should not take anything, not turn her back on him. He smiled, showing us he was missing numerous teeth, which only creeped up the creep factor. I waved my hand in a declining manner to show that we weren't going to take any candy and started ignoring him while talking to my sister to keep her comfortable. He didn't let up, moving himself into our field of vision again, still talking away at us about stuff we didn't understand. Again, we moved on to the playground equipment to move him out of our direct field of view, but enough to still see him from the corner of our eyes. At this point, I'm sure he understood we didn't speak his language, as he switched a single word for cat in my native language, pointing to the alleyway he came out of. My sister was a big cat lover at that age like most girls, and immediately wanted to go along, climbing off the equipment, and started to walk towards the alleyway before he stopped her. By that point, I had also jumped off to grab her arm and drag her back. He waved his finger in her face to make clear she shouldn't go in the alley, then pointed to me and made a follow sign. My sister's temper flared at this and she started to throw a tantrum, not sure if from the fear or the anger which angered the man. Dropping his cane, he was on his knees extremely quick, picking my sister up and holding his hand over her nose and mouth. She bit his finger to the point of bleeding. He dropped on the ground and she made a run for it to grandma's house. By this time, multiple people had heard the screaming and came out to look what had happened as the male jumped to his feet and ran off, leaving his cane behind. It took me a few years and therapy to process what happened that day. Now looking back, I'm sure the cane was just a dis distraction, something to make us think we were dealing with a feeble old man, someone who couldn't harm anyone, and if I had gone in that alley, God knows what could have happened. So creepy old trench coat and rain boots guy, let's not meet again. Predator on the school, the elementary school playground. So this happened a few years ago. This didn't directly happen to me, but something almost happened to my youngest sister. I have two sisters. I think this is when I was in senior or junior in high school. I don't know. The elementary school is where most events are held. It's close by the high school. The track and the soccer fields are right next to it. Behind it is the playground. I remember it being kind of a colder night. My middle sister, who was uh, 14 or 15 years old at the time, and I were playing in a soccer game. The game went on as normal. The game ended, I remember there being a commotion amongst the parents. Some man was hanging around the playground. My mom was freaking out because she couldn't find my little sister, who was at the time 9 or 10 years old. She was supposed to be on the playground with some of her friends. A bunch of older high schoolers went over to scare the man off and looked for other kids on the playground and warned them. Some of the parents began to go into full panic mode. Some of the adults went over as well. The high schoolers found something disturbing. They found the man jerking off in one of the slides. They quickly rounded up all the kids and got them back. The police were called, but the man left. 
For the next week, people kept seeing him hang around the track. He would hang out in the evenings and nights. I can't remember if the police got him or not. I hope they did. I don't even want to imagine what would have happened if somebody didn't find those other kids and my younger sister. I hope to God nothing like this ever happened again. Possible pedo photographer at the playground. Okay, so I have no idea if this really counts as a creepy encounter, but I've been lurking around here for quite a bit, and it's jogged my memory to this disturbing event from my childhood. It was an absolutely normal day for me and my mom. She'd taken me to local playground, and I had a ball playing around all on my own. There were no other kids, and that was just how I liked it. I was a shy kid, and other children at a playground intimidated me. This was probably due in part to the fact that I'm an only child, and I was never in a daycare service or anything like that, so I never really had any interaction with other kids, but I digress. This was when he came over. We, 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 we never got his name, so I'll just call him the photographer. He just randomly came up to us and asked for my picture. He said he was a photographer, but looking back on it now, a scruffy bearded fat man did not seem like an actual photographer, especially not one to be taking pictures of little girls alone at the playground. He told us he has these pictures and we put them on the internet on some website that I was never told about. I believe he also told me I'd be famous or something like that. A as a little girl, I always, tr I always dreamed of being a celebrity one day. I was obviously ecstatic at the offer. I remember begging my mom to let him take my picture, and with some hesitation, she let him. The picture he took seemed rather innocent. He just told me to climb up these ladder things and slide down the slide and go on the swings and stuff. I remember that he told me to go down the slide about three times and said I should have my hands above my head like that. After a few pictures, he told us he was done and then told my mom that these pictures would be on the internet in a few weeks. He never said what specific website it be on. After that, my mom pretty much rushed us out of there. I think that was the last time my mom offered us to go to the playground without me begging her as well. So to this day, I have no idea what that creep did with the pictures of me, and I'm gonna go ahead and assume that he jacked off the poor naive little me out of that, or he did put them on the internet, which is still super gross to be thinking about in the first place. So creepy possible pedophile who took pictures of me, let's not meet again, ever. Malice at the Playground When I was about 8 or 9 years old, I was at the neighborhood playground with my sister. She was a couple years older than me, on one side of the park was a street Oakdale, and on the other side was an alley. As you'll see, it's quite interesting. We were playing one day near the entrance to the playground. There was no one else at the park that day. A ragged looking homeless man dressed in dark baggy clothes came walking out the alley, and he came to a stop when he saw us. He just stood there staring at us. It was a stare that was not friendly. It was a malicious stare. You could just feel the bad vibes coming off of him. We began to slowly start backing away to get out of the park. He then began to put one leg over the fence to climb into the playground, all while never breaking eye contact. Before he get his second leg over, we booked it. Luckily, we lived a block away in an apartment near the train tracks. It was a little west. That stare is still etched in my memory after all these years. He targeted my toddler. So, I've been scrolling through Reddit Let's Not Meet for weeks now, reading every story trying to get the courage to post my own. So here goes nothing. Please excuse my grammar and spelling. It was last summer July of 2017 when I decided to take my toddler to the park. It's about two miles from my house, on the other end of town. Thinking about it now, the park is an awful location, secluded on a back road in the middle of nowhere. But at the time, I thought it would be a good place to allow my daring two-year-old two to roam without having to worry about traffic. I was five months pregnant at the time and figured that I could also use the exercise. So I loaded her up in her stroller and walked over there. My daughter was and still is a huge fan of the whole rock hunting trend. 
So, upon her arrival, I took her out of her stroller, parked it under the pavilion, and hand in hand, we went along the creek and through the park scavenging for painted rocks. I noticed the glittery rock under the bottom of the slide and pointed it out to my daughter. She ran and scooped it up, yelling and screaming, I found one, mommy! I found one! Next, I heard clapping. It was then that I first noticed a man sitting down on a picnic bench near the pavilion, eating a sandwich. He had a smile on his face, which initially seemed friendly, and he was clapping at my daughter's excitement and even let her woohoo! He looked to be around my eye age at the time, I guess 23. I later found out he was early 30s. He was wearing sweatpants and a plain black tank, beanie on his head, basketball sneakers, and a book bag. Me being from a small town where everyone is just genuinely friendly. I thought that maybe he had just walked over from the basketball courts down the street and just wanted some shade to eat his lunch under. My little one was so persistent on finding more rocks that I didn't even have time to think before she took my hand and led me over a small bank down to Duck Pond. I didn't realize at the time that my phone, my pepper spray, everything I had with me was now in a stroller under a pavilion with a total stranger and my daughter and I were out of sight. After a few minutes of searching the rim of the pond for rocks, we decided it was time to go play on the playground. As we crossed over the top of the bank, I see this man rummaging through my stroller. I reached to my pocket for my phone so that I could call the town cops, thinking that this was some thug looking for some spare cash or something like that, or maybe a purse in my child's stroller. Then I realized my phone is in the stroller. I'm two miles from my house. The park is completely surrounded by creeks and ponds, with the entryway being the only way in, and the nearest house is about a half mile past the pavilion, so even if I wanted to run or go get help, this guy would obviously see me and flee. Now, let me re remind you, at this point, I wasn't thinking the worst. I didn't think about this guy being a potential killer or rapist. My main concern was that he was going to steal my belongings, naive, I know. So after a couple of minutes of standing there, watching him go through my stroller, he looks up. Our eyes lock. I say, excuse me, he replies. I'm sorry, but do you happen to have aspirin? I'm not feeling well. I nodded my head. No, grab the stroller in one hand and my daughter's hand in the other. Hindsight, I should have at this point put my toddler in her stroller, but I didn't because I knew that I just want to get out of there as quickly as possible. This is when things got weird. Well, do you have any water? Or just maybe a bite to eat? I think my sugar is low. I heard him say in an innocent tone. My mind started going a million miles a minute. I literally just watched him eat a sandwich. This was a trap. Well, aren't you the cutest little thing I've ever seen? What does your shirt say? He says to my toddler as he lunges out and grabs her shoulder. I grip her hand tight and pull her towards me. You've got to be kidding me. He read. Oh, how cute. Do you like kins? I have a couple of my houses just down the road. I swooped her up, grabbed the stroller, and started walking as fast as I could with a giant baby belly and a squirmy toddler in my arms. I wasn't trying to scare you. I heard him yell. I kept walking. I get to the entrance of the park, turn around, and he's following me, hot on my trail. He's smiling. His smile now doesn't seem so kind and innocent, more like malicious and twisted. He's waving at me, trying to flag me down. I know that at this rate, due to my pregnancy and my toddler kicking and screaming, that he would eventually catch up to me. So I stop, strap my daughter in her stroller, and take off. I'm not trying to figure out how to get my phone. I know that it is in my purse, in the bottom of the stroller, but I can't reach it without stopping and digging it out. Every couple of feet... I would look back to see if this creep was still behind me every single time he was, until I hit town. I assumed that the increase in traffic scared him off. At this point, I called 911, who puts me through to the state police barracks. I tell them what happened. They took a report and asked if he was still following me. I said, not that I know of. They said that since I was now within half a mile from my home, they would just send a trooper to my house whenever they got a chance to finish a report and get a description. No cop ever came. The next day, I called at 8 a.m., demanding an officer come out. Once again, I, I was told that they would when they got a chance, so I took to the almighty Facebook with my story. Not much for attention, more to let other parents know to be aware when taking their kids to that park. 
that night at 9 p.m., the, the local news shared my story over Facebook. At 9.10, my phone rang. It was a local police officer asking me to remove my Facebook post because it was causing an uproar in the community. I went off. The man harassed me and my toddler tried talking to my toddler into going to his home and followed me into town and they couldn't care less. Fast forward two weeks, I was looking at the local news page and came across my story. I see that someone responded to it with a haha emoji reaction. I click to see who it is and I see that his name is let's just say Tim Smith. I start looking through his photos, trying to put a face in the name and then I see it. A photo of Tim Smith with a creep from the park. The caption saying, my son and me, and all the comments asking if he was out of jail yet. I mentioned this to my husband, and he had the brilliant idea to look up the same last name Smith on Megan's Law to see if anything would show up. Sure enough, there he was. He did eight years in jail for molesting a four-year-old, and had a couple other charges on his record too. I called the police and reported that I now know the name of the person, and know for a fact that he's a child predator, and shouldn't have been that close to a park or a school. Again, they dismissed me. Just last month, I made a public Facebook post on the local rock hunting page about how excited I am to start rock hunting again now that the snow has melted. A bunch of people liked the post, but only one person commented, someone by the name of Ron Smith, who wrote, I can't wait to see you again. Since then, I've gotten my pistol permit, but either way, Mr. Smith, let's not meet again. Daddy's friend. This event took place 25 years ago, so I apologize if it's not as detailed as you would like. I was 7 years old, and my younger sister was 5, and we disembarked the school hand in hand on the bus, excited about our first week of school, ready to tell mom all about it, around the corner for home, and saw that there was no car in the driveway. Little sister was happily chatting about her teacher's new friends on the playground, but I felt unsettled. Why was mom gone? Mom was always waiting for us, usually with chopped fruits or veggies. Well, maybe just the car was gone? Silly thought, but not everyone's a genius when they're only seven years old. As we reached the intersection of the porch and driveway, I knew the car was gone, because mom was gone, because the front door was shut. We weren't latchkey kids, although that quite normal in our neighborhood, but I did have a house key just in case. I'd wonder what our parents had meant, but this must be the case. I released my little sister's hand and knelt to fish out the key of the bottom pouch of my backpack. I was a little nervous, but proud I remembered, and when I rose to unlock the door I froze. Looking down on us from inside the house was a figure dressed head to toe in black. To my mind now, this camouflage was so complete that there wasn't anything revealing around the eyes to indicate this person's race. I had stopped with a key in my hand, and although I had no intention of getting in now, the figure shook its head back and forth. I dropped the key and urged my little sister off the porch. I was at a loss of what to do, so I led her to the side yard where we had a tire swing and a rope swing and told her we could wait for mom. This had not been part of a just-in-case conversation. When I folded myself into the tire swing, I realized I'd wet my pants. Little sister asked me what was wrong, and lying was never my strong point, so I told her someone was in the house. She looked puzzled and said, It's just daddy's friend. I, I, I asked her how she knew, and she answered that she just did. I told her we would wait for mom anyways. I don't know how long we waited. I was frightened, hungry, and uncomfortable in my wet pants. Whoever was in the house left from the back door, because after some time, my dog darted around the house and happily greeted us. The fence was being redone in the back, and everyone who lived in our house knew to put him on a chain, rather than let him run around freely and escape through the gaps. Upon Sonny's arrival, little sister was ready to go in, and I was not. We argued in the way kids do, exchanging witty insults just as dumb dumb and stupid head, but I was able to win the battle due to the merit of my age. Mom finally pulled into the driveway, and Sonny and I beelined for her. I'd given it to the tears I'd been repressing, and the only thing that shocked me out of my hysterics was mom urging me to come into the house. I managed to tell her about the man in black, and little sister chimed in with, Daddy's friend! And then mom ushered us into the car, even Sunny, and drove a few blocks to her friend's house. The police were called, 
We were questioned together and separately, and were left with Mom's friend while she and the officers walked all throughout the house. There had been a break in focus on the basement, Dad's territory, and my parents' bedroom. If anything was gone, Mom didn't know what it was, and Dad feigned innocence in relation to his friend. Nothing like this ever happened again, and when I asked Mom if, if she remembered it, she told me the past is better left there. I haven't been that scared since. So, Dad's friend, let's not meet.